Hey everyone, today I'm going to try and repair the heat exchanger on the boat. So when I first bought the boat, the heat exchanger had completely corroded through underneath. So I fabricated a new shell for the heat exchanger out of aluminium sheet and I used the original tube bundle that came out of it. But the tube bundle had little pinholes in it, which I did try to block up, but I don't think that was very successful. What's happening is when you run the boat, especially at high revs for a little while it starts to overheat and if you leave it for a few days when you come back to it it doesn't have any cooling water in it so I think that's because when you're running the engine the salt water is flowing through the tube bundle but because there's pinholes in it the cooling water is probably getting sucked into it and it's just bypassing um, through the tube bundle instead of flowing around the engine and likewise when you leave it for a couple of days the salt water flows out of the tube bundle and I think it might be siphoning the cooling water along with it. So I managed to get onto a guy in WA who had the same engine as me <clears throat> and he sent me over his heat exchanger. This is it. But this shell is not in very good shape. As you can see, it's got a hole in the bottom there and it's got a hole in here. And if you look down at it, there's kind of holes everywhere. But the tube bundle that came out of this heat exchanger seems to be all right. It doesn't look like it's got any holes in it. So what I'm going to do is take the tube bundle out of that heat exchanger and put it in the shell that I fabricated. And I'm also going to put an anode in that shell because when I first built it, I didn't put an anode in it. And after a couple of months, it's already starting to corrode. So I'm going to go out to the boat and grab the heat exchanger that I made, bring it back in. We're going to swap a few bits over. Then we'll take it back out and install it and we'll take it for a run and see if that's made any difference. So thank you very much for watching and let's get into it. All right, this is the original tube bundle. So these tubes were completely corroded through. So what I did was just try and fold them over, but I don't think that's really worked that well. And there's probably more pinholes inside it that I can't really see. So we're gonna get rid of this tube. This is the tube bundle that came with the new heat exchanger. And it looks like it's in much better condition. So. I'm just gonna clean that shell up a little bit. We're gonna put this tube bundle in it. And then we're gonna drill and tap a hole for our anode. And we'll go back out and we'll put it back on. This is the anode that I'm going to install in the shell. So I'm just gonna tap and drill a hole but this shell is only made out of five mil sheet. So I've just cut another little, little square of five mil sheet and I'm just gonna weld that onto the corner just so the, th the, the thread's got a little bit more to hang on to. It's only aluminium, so although it's got no load on it, I think it'll be better if it's got a bit more thickness for the thread. So I'll do that now and I've just used a die grinder just to grind out the, the seal a little bit because I'm gonna put the original seals back in it that, I, that came with the, the new heat exchange that I got. They seem to be in pretty good shape and I just had some smaller O-rings in there. These seals are a bit more heavy duty. They're tapered. So I'll just ground that out a bit and I'll put the bigger seals in there.
that's the heat exchanger back together with a new tube bundle and an anode. So now we'll take it back out to the boat, put it on, and take it for a run around and see if it's made any difference. I'm just gonna put the heat exchanger back on and just fill it up with water. And then if everything's working pretty well, I'll go back into the jetty later and I'll flush the whole system because it'll have salt water in it from the last tube bundle leaking salt water into the system. So we'll just put it on and see how it goes. And then if it's working all right, then we'll flush it out and we'll put some better coolant in it. along we're doing about six knots and the engine's not going flat out but it's going say three quarters of the way to flat out and it's just starting to get hotter now so generally if you go on this speed it overheats pretty easily so we'll see how we go we've been going for about 15 minutes and it's just below 180 so really don't want it to go too much hotter hopefully if it's working well it'll stabilize about here give it about 10 more minutes and we'll have another look mm -hmm. all right we've been going for about another 10 minutes and it's holding just below 180 which is around 80 or 85 degrees Celsius we've been driving around for at least half an hour and the temperature is just below 180 when, when you crank the motor up to flat out it gets about 180 or slightly above which is probably a little bit too hot but it doesn't make that much difference in your speed so if you dial the engine back a little bit you don't you might lose about half a knot but the temperature seems to drop down just below 180 which is would be a, roughly about 80 degrees which is where this diesel engine wants to sit at so it looks like we might have solved that problem so that's good for our impending trip down to Refuge Cove because, you know, it's good. I've got the confidence that if we have to, we can put the engine on and run it for a couple of hours now.